I can really get down to the intro music, man. That I know, right? I was thinking nice. the same thing. I was it's like, so oh, man, smooth. intro music bumps a little. Yeah, bumps. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Sports where we're always trending, trying to give you our Buffalo Bills and NFL breakdowns. Uh, Paul, we have a propensity to talk about things way before they happen. Now, that's not that's not try to overinflate our egos here, but there are some things that we happen to discuss that maybe a couple weeks, two, three weeks later, they end up manifesting. And we're like, uh, we cut an episode yeah. on that guys. Uh, right. And we try to reference it all the time. But yeah. another thing that we decide to do a lot is the way too early episodes. And I love doing those. They're a lot of oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, so as you can see by the title, who makes the 53? I don't even know. I really don't even know who's going to make the 53, but we're going to nope. work through today. We're going to have a little fun and drop in the comment section. Uh, not necessarily who you um, who you think may make the 53 or any kind of comments of you guys are crazy. This guy's going to make it or you guys forgot about this guy. Um, I think we all know that Josh Allen is probably going to make the roster. I'm hoping. But the point is, um, I did that to see if he was listening. He wasn't even listening. No. Nope. Too busy. <laughs> doing work over here, Mario. Doing work. <laughs> I can't wash clothes. I'm saving lives over here. So what I need to do. I need to share my uh, my tab really quick with everybody because we're going to just put up the roster. We're going to have some fun, and hopefully you guys have a little fun too. But before we get to that, make sure you smash that like and that subscribe button. Uh, all of the socials will be listed in the description in our link tree, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, and all of our links to iTunes and Spotify. Today's show is going to be sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes. And be on the lookout for the golf tournament that we're going to have on September 18th, yeah. the day before the home opener. Uh, charity to be determined, and we'll give you all the details on that. But we've been doing it, and we've been able to donate to a great uh, charity, Matthew 25 Farms, last year, the Punt Foundation before that. And we got another one coming up this year that we're going to announce. So be on the lookout for that in the community tab. We also have a Patreon, but that's yeah. here. There's right a now. lot. There's a lot there's going a lot. on. There's a lot in there. So, yeah. Paul, let me just throw this right on the screen. Sure. To see, put that there. All right. You want to go offense or defense first? Why don't we do defense? Let's, Let's do, defense. do defense first. Let's yeah. do defense. Oh, got it all right here. Obviously, if you guys known, uh, if you go on our lads, this will be available to you as well. All of the guys listed in green are rookies, and all, you're going to see how the the players were acquired and what round they were drafted in and whatnot. Obviously, Jordan Phillips is CC's cap casualty at Oliver in 2019. It was the first round pick. So you guys know all that stuff. All right. That being said, is my cursor not? Oh, it'll highlight the guy's name. Okay, here we go. So if we look at the starting players that we have on here, Paul. Are, are we um, trying to go 25, 25? Or are we going 27, 23, like – uh, I guess we'll just see how it breaks down because I think both of us, when we talked about the tight ends, we only had two actually making yeah. the roster. Right. So, which will open up a spot for a something. couple other positions and yeah. something like you know, offensive okay. linemen. Even I think that the two biggest positions will be the offensive defensive line. Yeah. Uh, and then followed by the wide receivers. For me, that's that's yeah. how it condition how normally it was, and. Um, you yeah, know, history it, says, right? History, history says, says that. that's the way it's going to go. Uh, another thing yeah. you guys want to do, as you're as we're all looking at this chart, you want to notice that if the, if the player's name is in all caps, that means he's over 30. That means he's over 30. So another thing to keep in mind as we're going through this roster. So obviously, starting team, you're not going to debate any of those guys. you got Rousseau, Oliver, Jones, Miller on the front. Uh, even though you said Miller is listed as a linebacker correct yeah it's just most one of those of his things career. right i mean miller is primarily played in three four systems right and then again some people are calling him a strong side linebacker it just depends on the depth chart that you look at uh, we know buffalo has not run three linebacker sets so that's not really a fair representation of you know what this defense <laughs> does uh, yeah. because they're typically just running two linebacker sets uh, because if you have von miller out there plus two linebackers it means you're losing who Losing Teron Johnson or Jordan Poyer, like you're you're minus one of those guys. If you have no, four I'm guys just, down, I'm just thinking of you're not really losing those guys if you got Miller in there. I mean, it it does shed some light on because a lot of teams play a lot of different defenses now, Paul. I mean, you could mm -hmm. be yeah. a core four three team, but yet the Bills ran nickel. How much last year? It was oh insane. yeah, primarily. Yeah, it, primarily. it makes sense to 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 sign Jordan Phillips and Tim Settle then if you're thinking of going to a three four scheme because those guys can hog up the middle on you. And yeah. you can have Miller on the outside, but that that notwithstanding, 
You have uh, Milano and Edmonds. You have Elam currently uh, in there, uh, Poyer and Hyde. And then it's, White is listed. However, you guys know that he's not going to be back until late right. October at the earliest. And Teron Johnson's your nickel back, which we know is probably going to be the case. Uh, J- uh, Dane Jackson will probably be in that role to start. Obviously, the incumbents get first um, crack at it. And if they yep. are not up to snuff, obviously McDermott and Frazier will make uh, adjustments accordingly. But Christian Bedford has been making some noise in practice lately, Paul. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, rookie's got to rookie's got to eat too, man. <laughs> <laughs> he does. We're running the same play four times in a row, you know, because something went wrong. Eventually, the CBs are going to figure it out. Uh, but there was a lot of <laughs> there was a lot of smoke around Nick McLeod last year. He was a guy that people really wanted yes. to uh, make the team because they thought that he had earned it. He, I think, he ended up in Pittsburgh, if I remember correctly. He got picked up off of waivers, went to, I think it was Pittsburgh, uh, but now is back. So yes. again, depth chart doesn't say that's somebody you need to pay attention to. But Nick McLeod made a lot of a lot of noise last off season. So yeah, I'd um, like to say uh, from for a, for a, from a business decision with some of these guys, Buffalo. Everyone's looking at Buffalo now. Buffalo mm-hmm. wasn't really a place that a lot of people wanted to go. And now you're sitting there thinking, hey, this is a place I want to go. Even if I right. don't make the team, they're going to, I'm going to have a chance because Buffalo re signed me. That means another team would be like, hey, if Buffalo re signed them, I want that guy. So it, it's it's beneficial for them to even just to be in camp. So it's, yeah, a, it's a really good thing. Well, uh, we're seeing something similar with the cornerbacks as we saw with the wide receivers, right? Because we did it, we yes. cut an episode on Isaiah McKenzie, whether he was going to make the 53 man roster or not, actually kind of defending whether Isaiah McKenzie could make the 53 <laughs> or not. Yes. Um, I'm not going to say that a previous episode uh, a couple weeks ago wasn't the catalyst for that <laughs> with like a hundred comments telling me when I said Isaiah McKenzie wasn't going to make the team that I was, I was, I was clearly wrong. Um, but uh, the wide receiver group, you have Stefan Diggs making like $11.7 million. And then it's everybody else at less than $2 million. And yeah. you look at the bills defensive back group and you're seeing the same thing. You got Tredavious white making all this money. And then it's just everybody else after that. Right. Like there's, yeah, it's, it is interesting. it's not even close. It's wild to see that's where they choose to save money. Right. There's choosing to spend a ton of money across the defensive line, but they're going to bargain basement shop at the cornerback position. And they're going to bargain basement shop at the wide receiver position. That's what they've done the last few years. Um, that's kind of been the brand of, you know, how they build their roster. So that seems to be the way Bean likes to do it. Something to keep in mind. It is. It is. It is definitely something. Uh, I just want to check on Poyer's draft position really quick. I just thought it was very interesting that you have Poyer and Hyde that they brought over, mm-hmm. and he was a seventh rounder. Right. And then the the two backups that they have in uh, Jaquan Johnson and Demir Hamlin, they're both sixth rounders. Right. So I just thought I just thought it was interesting the depth of this Buffalo Bills team. Paul, look at the sure. second, just like the depth chart here. I would be comfortable trotting that out. Sure. For like four or five yeah. games. If you gave me the second team defense of the Buffalo Bills, yeah. You could probably hold teams to 21 points. Right. I think that yeah. would be feasible, right? <laughs> Look yeah. at that roster. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that so many people are having so many different positions now with the Buffalo Bills, especially in camp right now, because of the depth of this team. There's so many options for them to go and right. for them to do what, the, what they want to do defensively that you don't, you're like, oh, okay, all right, Jordan Phillips, Tim Settle, Boogie Basham, AJ Epineza. That front four would, uh, you know, would make some noise. I think they would still make yeah. some noise. You want to put uh, Dotson and, and Bernard in the, in the middle, in the, in the weak side. I like that them too. They're fa- they're fast. They're quick. Dotson tackles everything. Yeah. Uh, and Bernard is just a, a machine in there. And you got Dane Jackson and Christian Bedford in there. Um, they're not the best of corners. They're not going to be starting on all thirty-two teams. But with Hamlin and Johnson back there trying to back them up, I think they could make some noise. And you got Sierra Neal in the slot, who's just the Hulk. You know, you know they the Buffalo Bills have a lot of depth here. So I, right. for one, for me. Would not change anything that you have on those first two first two mm-hmm. slots, and I don't sure. think a lot of Buffalo Bills fans would either, because, and I think the the, the confusion comes in these third and fourth columns. And yeah. Who do you want to who do you want to take out of mm-hmm. there? And I think you really wanted to focus on the defensive tackle position initially. Yeah. Well, these, and okay? you know, and and part of that, right? Because you have 
you brought back Shaq Lawson and Jordan Phillips, right? Because a couple of years ago, those were your emotional leaders on that defense, right? Yes. Like they were keeping everybody loose. They were having fun on the sidelines. They were the guys that kept everybody, you know, uh, from taking things a bit too seriously. Um, yep. And, but let's not forget, they're also starting at that time, right? Yeah. Like Shaq Lawson yeah. was, was a carryover from a previous regime, but he was still here. Jordan Phillips was picked up off, uh, off the scrap heap. Because of uh, because of your boys from Miami that said, Hickey and Lock, yep. yeah, Hickey and Lock said, listen, this guy's value. He's out there. Let's go get him. Um, and Jordan Phillips leaves, goes to Arizona for a couple seasons, is ultimately unhappy. Was making way too much money, and now he's back in Buffalo. But they did so. They had so many other transactions. Uh, a player like Shaq Lawson, I don't really. I mean, you got Boogie Basham. Like, isn't Shaq Lawson and Boogie Basham essentially the same player? Like, yeah. isn't the skill set like? pretty similar and if you look at jordan phillips we, you've already signed daquan jones you've already gone after tim settle bowl i mean daquan jones is older but i mean tim settle is a really good football player I, he's I, I, really good nobody like, was talking such a about smart him either. signing I that was such a smart signing I, the fact is jones or settle in that spot they're going to open up so many things for Miller and Oliver. Mm -hmm. And then you got that freak show on the other side and Rousseau. Right. This is, this is why it makes sense. Now when the Buffalo bills drafted Rousseau, I mean, we saw it as, as athleticism is rookie season, but now when you put these horses in between those guys, mm -hmm. Oh, like what? Right. Like it's, it's scary to see well, what, and, what it is. And, and I like your assessment though. Like Basham is like a younger version of, of Lawson, mm -hmm. I understand that, and you know, uh, it, it's assignment. Will football, Lawson make though, the Mark. team? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know, right? But it's assignment football. I think that was one of the things that kind of kept Basham off the field last year was he struggled with assignments. Right? He, he, when mm -hmm. he played, he was fun to watch, but he did have some. He did have struggle with some of his assignments. Right? Yeah. He, he struggled to kind of contain the edge. You get caught off. Um, you know, he get kind of pushed out by pulling, pulling guards. Like there were some things that, uh, you know, he had to get accustomed to at the NFL level. So you get Shaq Lawson because he was there. He wanted to come back. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he just come off a, a, you know, pretty decent contract because teams felt there was a lot of value in him. So again, you get him for a song and he's the perfect handcuff to boogie Basham, right? He is. A perfect handcuff to boogie. But when you really are unpacking that defensive line, is it possible that Shaq and Jordan, as fun as they were a couple seasons ago, if they're not the guys, is that going to be a little too noisy? Right? Like, are they going to be unhappy if they're not the guys? I think they both came back knowing they weren't going to be the guys. But the question is, will that impact the dynamic and make it hard to keep them? Right? Like, I love the ability. I love the thought. But it's more than just X's and O's, right? Like you gotta you gotta yeah. manage the locker room too. So do you think Phillips and Lawson are gonna be a headache off the field? Oh no, I don't I mean I mean, we're not even gonna we're not even gonna approach the fight at camp. Oh you know, yeah, that little joint. thing. It yeah. was what it was. You know, it, it's camp. It's not it's, that wasn't even at a kerfuffle or a Donnie Brook scale, right? It was that more was of a, a melee. Up. I would say a dust melee. up. I think it was a dust up. <laughs> dust up. Donnie Brooks more for hockey for me anyway. But the point I is, yeah. I, I, I don't know. If, nobody's foiling up before training camp. You know, nobody's foiling up. I think uh, the, the the you get, we got to realize that that the NFL is as much political as it is. Uh, you know, things that happen on the field happen, happen off the field as well. Mm -hmm. You talk about. Um, the Buffalo Bills have proven that they will reward guys that they draft. They will reward guys that are free agents that they bring in that will, that will perform. If they sign you to one or two year deals, Jordan Phillips and Shaq Lawson are the proof that you can get paid somewhere else if you do not want to be in Buffalo. And guess what? They just also proved recently that even if you leave, we will accept you back mm -hmm. if you want. You know, I mean, if you want to come back, the door's never shut in Buffalo, basically. Mm -hmm. So if right. you bring them back and you give them a chance in camp and then you decide to let them go, one or two, one of them, two, whatever, um, you still already set that precedent that you're willing to accept players back into your system, even if you right. didn't initially you know, draft them or have them on the team with you. 
Right. And I think that's, that sends a big message to the whole league with players to be like, hey, listen, I could go there, show how good I am. I can either get paid or I could stay. They'll take care of me. And that's right. a big deal to a player. Yeah. So so that I, so I just want to get that point out there. But as far as it goes, not just being a prisoner of the depth chart, as far as the top eight that you have, would Shaq replace Epineza? Because then the, the Bills organization then – they say, well, we may have made a mistake in drafting Epineza if you decide to, you know, oh, we're not going to. But that's the one of the things you got to take into consideration, too, because a lot of these organizations, they don't want to be like, you know, we wasted a second round pick on a guy. There's um, no way uh, that they're going to cut A.J. Epineza. Bean has shown that he could trade anything to anybody for anything, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Does trading just it make fact. it less, though, Paul? If what they trade him, like – if you cut a guy that you draft in the first three rounds, you're admittedly saying we we messed up in our department. Like, the guy I mean, didn't fit not here make or the something. Roster anyway, you know they did the same thing with Daryl Johnson, right? Like you looked at it and said yeah, he's yeah. a guy that we would really like to keep, but the values we're looking much. at the 53, and it makes it easier to make our 53 man without him here, right? Because he would have pushed <laughs> somebody else off the roster. So let's just get something for Let's get a future something for him later. I gotcha. mean, the truth is, Mark, if you look at the first two columns of that depth chart, right? That yes. is one, two, three, four. That's what? Uh, how many positions? 11. That's 22 players. If you take just the first two columns exactly as they are right now. And honestly, I wouldn't change anything about the first two columns of that depth chart. Nope. Right? No. Nope. So that brings you at 22 players. Well, that means you're only carrying four corners, right? And you're only carrying, uh, yeah, that means four corners, four defensive back and four defensive tackles and four linebackers. Well, you know, Tyler McKavich is probably going to make this team. So that pushes you to 23. Um, you're likely going to have to pick up more than just four corners. So you're going to have to take uh, Nick McLeod or a, a, or, uh, a Griffin or yeah, or, or maybe Cam Lewis, right? So that pushes you to 24, and that might be all you got, right? Like, that well, might be it. If you're looking at splitting the roster right down the pipe, one kicker, one punter, one long snapper, that means you're only going to be able to carry 25 guys on the offense if you want to carry Shaq Lawson and you want yeah. to keep Boogie Basham and you want to keep A.J. Epinesa. I agree with you. There's a log jam there. If if you if you go down the line now, Paul, the the rules. I just want to take a sidestep for everybody, just to, just so they know. You know, certain players are eligible, and certain players um, may struggle to make um, the practice squad. I'm just saying, the due to uh, the COVID regulations that they had, they decided to keep some of the regulations that they had during COVID for the practice squad. Right? Can you just yeah. give a little bit of a background of what the COVID or what the practice squad? eligibility um, is and how many players could you put on your practice squad if you want? Yeah. To. So there was a huge expansion of the practice squad going into 2020, right? So there's an article on CBS sports does a great job of actually breaking it down. Um, there are some changes to rules as far as how IR works now. So there, there's, this is probably a totally separate episode about how yeah. all this really works because even IR changed. But the one thing that happened that was different was that you can now uh, keep veteran players on your uh, practice squad, which has never really been the thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Practice squad is now going to be at 16 players. Wow. But that means you have to cut 16 players to get them on your practice squad. You have yeah. to cut them or waive them, right? And that's where some of this, like Shaq Lawson is an example, is a player that will not go through waivers. You could cut him, and then if no team shows interest in him, he can sign back with the Bills on the practice squad. Whereas a player like A.J. Epinesa, you would have to waive him and then any team could say, I will just take him. Um, and then he's on their active roster, right? Um, yeah. So different dynamics. But the way it is, uh, is now there's um, uh, 16 players on the practice squad. That's huge. I, it's it used huge. to be 12, yeah. wasn't it? Wasn't right. it 12? Yep. But now so there's now it's a maximum of six veterans. It's six veterans oh, six with veterans. unlimited. Yeah. But previously it was four. It's been expanded. It's now six. You can have six people on your roster with unlimited NFL experience, 10 with two or less accrued seasons. And accrued seasons are weird. I'm, we're not going to get into it, but uh, just because <laughs> a player has shown up on rosters over multiple years doesn't even mean that they have an accrued season. Uh, it's it's odd how it's done, but uh, yeah, it's possible it's great. you could have a 
have a player with like no accrued seasons. Yeah, and it's great that <laughs> it's like <laughs> who was that? Um Josh, Josh Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, yeah, he was in the league for like eight years and he was still he on never his had an accrued deal. season. It was great. Yeah, he still he only had like three accrued seasons. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was great. And I think, you know, we'll go over to the offense in a little bit after we we break down who else we have. But the fact that you mentioned we talked about AJ Epineza versus Shaq Lawson. Shaq Lawson, because he has more than four years of accrued seasons in the NFL, you can immediately cut him and put him on your practice squad if you wanted to, if you wanted to take that route. Epineza, because he has less than four, as Paul stated, you would have to waive him. Then he goes through waivers. If any team wants him and picks up, wants to pick up his current deal as it is right now, they could do that, and the Bills would have no say in it. They're like, oh, no, we no, were going to put him on our Epineza. practice squad. Epineza doesn't get a choice either. If he yeah. ends up on the Raiders, he ends up on the Raiders. Like, that's yes. what happens with waivers. That's exactly, and I think that's a that's a point that gets missed on a lot of people, and I'm glad you you were able to bring that up. So if we, you said if we go to Shaq, we're at 24. Shaq if puts we, us at 25. 25. So if you're you looking at the third column, column. Okay. you get to pick three people from that third or fourth column. That's oh all you my get. God, I don't. That's all you get. Oh God. I mean, I like Marquel Lee better than all those guys because he's a tackling, you know, monster. Yeah. But I think you you. With with the injury to Tredavious White, with the amount that you go nickel, I think you need to take another corner. Well, and that's another and I, thing, right? You can't put Tredavious White on on, on IR before uh, before you announce your fifty three man roster, right? True, because, because if you put a player now. on IR before the fifty three man roster is determined, they're out for the season. Oh, season. Okay, I'm sorry. It's I a thought season, it was right? That's the yeah. season. So he will be ineligible to return this year. Obviously, Buffalo doesn't want to do that. So Tredavious White will make the 53-man roster and then be put on IR uh, after the 53-man roster is declared, which means a player like uh, Griffin, Tim Harris, Nick McLeod, while they might want to get that player to play Tredavious White's roster spot while, while he's on the IR, Buffalo's going to put, him, put that player on waivers first. And yeah. hope that he clears waivers and then sign him to the 53-man roster after Tredavious White is shifted to the IR after the 53-man roster is declared. That's what that's what happened with uh, with Mark Reed Quest Ferguson. Steven. Yeah, and Reed, and Ferguson, Reed yeah. Ferguson too. Yeah, Mark West Steven, Reed Ferguson. The reason Reed Ferguson got caught last year was because they wanted Mark West Stevenson on IR on the 53-man roster. So they cut Reed Ferguson, who just signed like a four-year deal, uh, who is clearly going to make the team. <laughs> and uh, they cut him and said, just wait a day. We'll fix it. We'll make it better. Uh, they had Marquez Stevenson on the roster, moved him to IR the next day, and then re-signed Reed Ferguson. So that, that's the game that happens here. It's funny, too, how that game does work out. Because So, essentially, White makes the roster. Mm -hmm. You announce your 53, put White on IR, and then sign one of these guys if they clear waivers. That's basically yep. how it's going to work. That's, that's all you can do. That's the yep. game they have to play. Right. <laughs> that's it. I love it. I love it. And yeah. you know, it's like and Reed Reed had been in the league. He didn't get waived, did he? He got cut because he already had four years. Yeah, he yeah. Well He's that's like, why they cut. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, that's <laughs> they, we're not gonna put Reed on Reed on waivers. <laughs> no, they're like, who's been around a while that we could cut? And it's like, oh Reed. There you go, buddy. Oh my god, that's so funny. All right. Hey yeah. guys, stay tuned. Stay tuned for the offensive episode too. We're going to be filming that soon. Uh, we went a little over talking about the defense. So, yeah, I mean, if the th it, just real quick, though, I got to take Mikhevich, I got to take Bryant, and I got to take uh, McLeod. Yeah. I'm taking kinda, another defense. I'm kind of similar. I mean, I think Mikhevich makes the team just because he's that special teams linebacker. Um, I have a feeling like McLeod is the guy. Um, and then I know, I know you're a Cam Lewis guy. I just think they're, you know, I get it, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, Giles Harris. Uh, Ooh, I like it. I like well, it. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's one of those things, man. Like, I don't know. I like him, but from a roster depth perspective, I imagine he's probably not going to make it. Fun um, to talk about. It's fun to talk yeah. about. Hey, maybe Jordan Miller, man. Those Washington, uh, those Washington cornerbacks. Give me all the Washington corners. Give me. How all did I them. miss that? I know. Yeah, you and love those gonna, Washington corners. Yeah, and again, you know, when you start looking at it, you could cut Shaq and then bring him back if you got to put Trey on IR. 
Shaq's the guy you cut because all those other guys that we just mentioned all have to go through waivers. Why do that to yourself, right? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, and that's the game that's played. And right, that's, exactly. That's what I'm saying. All right, guys, when we go, we're going to be right back. We're going to talk about the offense.